So welcome to the judicial branch as now we're going to talk about what the judicial is. You got the executive and you also got the um, the um, is, um, legislative. So the judicial is in many opinion one of the least representative release talked about. So now we're going to just get more details into it. And you're going to know to do judicial, judge, judge, court. So that's really easy to understand that. So let's get ready to talk about it. Is now we talk about what is judicial review. Uh, judicial review is the ideal U.S. system of government that the actions of the executive and legislative branch of government. Judicial review allows the Supreme Court to take action to take active role in ensuring that the other branches of government abide the Constitution. Judicial review was established in the classic case in Mulberry versus Madison. So is this Supreme Court? Um, they are like the fathers. They tell, they they make, they make, um, the legislative and executive follow the Constitution and make sure it doesn't go beyond and beyond. If it does, it is considered as unconstitu unconstitutional. So Supreme Court tells them, hey, you're going overboard. That's not good. That's not right. Stay in your path. Stay right there. If you go above, we want to take action. When it was created, the article it was created in Article Three of the Constitution, a second after the legislative and the executive branch. Now it was created in 1787. The Constitution of the New Nation created the division branch of government, which the Supreme Court represents. Again, Supreme Court is the highest court of nation. It has grown from six justices to nine, which includes one justice and eight associates who were appointed for the lifetime term by the President of the United States. So talking about this is that the um the, the president of the United States so in 2015 is Barack Obama and he selects a Supreme Court member after one of them retires and one of them dies so he picked that one and served for life the only reason the, the one Supreme Court the president can take away one of the Supreme Court judges is if unless they're doing something illegally or wrong other than that they should stay there for life now this is simple to 2015 this is this is now the 2015 Supreme Court Chief Justice. His name is John Roberts. So he's the current. Now we did all that brief history. Now let's talk about the Judicial Acts of 1789. This is what the video is supposed to be about. The Judicial Acts of 1789 was the Supreme Court Federal Written Peace adopted on September 24th, 1789, in the first session of the Federal United States Congress. It established the federal judiciary of the United States. Article 3, Section 1 of the Constitution prescribes that the judicial power of the United States shall be vested in one Supreme Court and such his favorite courts as Congress saw fit to establish. Again, this is what I've been saying. Supreme Court, highest court in this case. If it's not the highest court, then that's not right because everything relies on the Supreme Court. Supreme Court is like the final decision, okay? It's like student teacher principal okay so the principal has the final word and what the teacher says if the teacher is not declare it being bad you go to the principal and the principal says this is this is good what are you doing that's what the, the supreme court is supreme court is the highest court in the world i mean you guys sorry and um it's just basically it's the final. It's, it's like I said. It's the final word. If you want to go, you want to sue them again. Go to the Supreme Court, and the Supreme Court accepts the Supreme Court accepts the um case. They give the final word whether you're guilty or not. Now, finally, it's going to continue. The, the Senate Journal reports that Richard Henry Lee reported the Judiciary Bill out of committee on June 21st, 1789. Oliver, that was from Connecticut, was his chief author. The bill passed the Senate 46 favored 14. Six didn't vote five on July 17, 1789, and the House of Representatives then debated the bill in July and August 1789. The House then passed the bill, winning it 37 16 on September 17, 1789, and the House passed the Senate final decision of the bill just four days later. So, this is coming off, and now who signed it? It was the first president of the United States, George Washington. He signed the Judiciary Act of 1789 into law on September 24, 1789. 
among the nominees were John J. Petit, Chief Justice, John Rutledge, William Crushing, Robert H. Havison, James Wilson, and John Blair as associate judges, and Edward Randolph as for attorney general. Now, as also these are the states, the 13 colonies was mostly, there was no um, Rhode Island, as we know, Rhode Island did not go down to the convention. So I hope you like this video. I know I explained a lot. I know I went fast. I know I messed up. But if you if you need more help, please go to your history teacher or go to Google, Bing, Yahoo, etc., and find out more. But hopefully this gets you things. It's simple. Um, the judicial Supreme Court. Now, if you go to Article Three, they're gonna tell you what's the minimum requirements for that. You can see that for yourself. But this is basically the same as I said all the time. The judicial court judge so it's mostly most likely the easiest one of the three branches thank you very much